What's up everybody? This is Boris at the Ecology Design Studio. Today we're talking about computers, specifically some of the components that it takes to build a personal computer. We'll begin with the main component, the motherboard. The circuitry on our motherboard contains all the instructions for handling different processes, such as audio and visual, computational, and performance during startup or boot time. Uh, one of the things that you, you see when you start up your computer is the BIOS, the basic input-output system. The CPU central processing unit is uh, a microprocessor not physically attached uh, to the motherboard so as to give users the ability to upgrade at a future time should they choose to do so. A motherboard, mobile for short, is sometimes referred to as the logic board. There are a variety of boards out there but a predominant one is the advanced technology extended. Now when we look at our mobile we see a lot of delicate circuitry on it and I mean a lot. If you've ever seen it, you've probably wondered how people came up with such an intricate design um, that allows them to perform amazing things like 3D graphics, um, video editing, mu music composition. In short, all those wondrous things computers are able to perform easily without requiring us to think about the intricate details involved in a background. Well, have you ever heard about or seen one of the very first computers? Uh, when we say first computers, um, quick, what's the first year that pops in your head? Um, probably somewhere between 1960 and 1980, right? Roop. The first digital computing device uh, was called the Athanasov Berry Computer, or ABC. Um, the idea for it originated in 1937 and became a reality in the early 1940s. It wasn't a computer like the ones we're used to. It was designed for linear programming problems and used a paper card for data storage, which uh, wasn't very reliable. You can check out some of the links below for pictures and more details on that first computer. Well, um, Athanasov went off to war and the project uh, ran in stasis until uh, after the Second World War. After that, uh, during the period between uh, the 1960s and 1980s, um, great progress is made in automated computing. And it's probably um, at this period that uh, most of us are familiar with, at least to um, a certain degree. If you ever seen a picture of the early computers, um, the thing that most stands out um, is that, well, they're huge. They take up entire rooms at a time. And the reason for that, the concept of miniaturization um, was kind of sort of not there. Uh, so instead of delicate, thin circuitry soldered onto a board, they used uh, legit cables and larger scale industrial electric components for power, connectivity, cooling, and so on. As time progressed, um, and our understanding of the pieces it took to create an electrical device capable of executing automated processes that will perform pre-programmed calculations on a consistent basis, the scale or size of computers began to decrease. Alright, so enough about the history of the computers. Let's move on to the components that connect to our motherboard and make the computer what it truly is. Uh, we start with the BIOS, or the basic input-output system, and um, the first statement I said was kind of misleading. That's not a hardware. Um, BIOS is not is not a hardware. Um, it's uh, the onboard instructions of our motherboard that allows us to control specific characteristics of how our system operates. On some of the newer mobiles, it allows us to change some of the instructions for things like voltage, fan speed, and uh, which data storage devices boot first, and so on. Uh, in the BIOS, you have the ability to configure how your hard drives, uh, which house your operating system and data, function. If you have more than one drive, um, you can connect them as one using RAID 0. Um, a quick caveat is, um, is due here because um, the data is stripped between the two drives, and while it is stable during operation, it does not really tolerate failure, and a fault in one drive uh, means that you lose all the data across both. Right. Advanced host controller interface mode. The alternative is IDE, as an in integrated drive electronics and not integrated development environment, which is something used for programming. If I recall correctly, uh, IDE is used mostly for um, USB type thumb drive systems, um, much smaller in size than a hard disk drive, um, something around 8 gigabytes. We move on to SATA, or um, the Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, or a Serial ATA. 
It's used to attach things like hard disk drives, solid state drives, optical drives, and other components. Um, the SATA cables you've probably seen are used to transfer um, data uh, between the connected device um, and a motherboard, which takes care of um, processing uh, program and data instructions um, with the help of the CPU and the random access memory states. Quick history note, there's a thing called PADA, parallel ATA. Some people may get a bit salty upon hearing this statement as PADA is still in use. Um, the reason I refer um, to it as history is because while well, its fastest speed is slower than SATA's slowest speed. So pretty much useless in today's modern day high speed computational environment. Uh, some of the photos you're, you're seeing um, playing across uh, are from an old computer that still uses um, uh, parallel ATA for both its optical and storage drives. Um, one of the advantages of uh, PADA is that you can connect two drives um, with one cable, uh, whereas um, for, for SATA you need one per drive. On to PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect. The current standard is PCIe, which stands for PCI Express. What this name and acronym uh, really is trying to say is that uh, we can extend the basic functionality of a motherboard by plugging in extension cards. That's really all uh, graphics and sound cards do. They increase a computer's capacity and ability to perform certain uh, functions by increasing the complexity of the extension board and any built-in memory, um, GPUs, FireWire, sound cards, and everything else we plug into a PCIe slot also contains instructions for how data is handled and transferred between them and the CPU or other computers, but we're not really worried about that right now. PCI is a transportation mechanism for hardware. Uh, think of it as a city bus, only instead of people, it's ferrying data between uh, different components inside of a computer. So, for example, an aftermarket graphics card will send data through uh, the available PCIe channels uh, to our RAM. The way the CPU is able to send data to the correct place at the correct time, or sequence, is through the clever use of electrical circuits printed on the board uh, in, in its most implicit terms. Uh, what this means is that, um, think of it as a city map, think of the, the motherboard as a city map, and the thin soldered circuits um, as streets. Data moves, stops, and gets rerouted depending on the configuration uh, and instructions uh, that those circuits receive. So for example, we plug in a GPU, a graphics processing unit, into a PCI uh, 8 slot, Think of the PCI slot as a highway, and the 8 is the number of lanes on it. Uh, to put it simply, our GPU will have 8 available lanes for data transfers. The PCI slots come in 8x8 uh, eight eight and 16x16, sixteen sixteen, and the numbers really stand for bits. A bit is the base unit used by a computer to represent information for processing. Uh, when you're upgrading your GPU with more than one graphic card, um, say for example you're trying to do SLI or Scalable Link Interface, between two GPUs. Uh, make sure you connect them to the same PCI type slot, meaning both need to be in the eight uh, in the eight slots or both need to be in the 16 slots, uh, rather than intermixing one in the eight and the other in the 16 and vice versa. Now when we're building a computer, uh, there comes a point at which we have uh, everything connected except the front panel connectors. Uh, these wires link uh, to your power and reset buttons on your case, as well as any LED or vitamin D diode indicators you may have for errors, hard drive activity, and so on. Uh, usually we have um, a setup that, that sounds similar to this, a reset switch, um, hard disk drive uh, LED, speaker, power LED, and power switch. If you take a closer look at the diagram, um, you see a plus and a minus. The minus is um, the white and the plus is your positive ground or colored white. Connecting the front panel wires can sometimes be a pain. Uh, sometimes you'll have a proprietary motherboard with no manual, a motherboard with a manual that turns out to be useless, different color wires, and so on. A lot of things can, um, can happen that can uh, conflict with your ability to connect the front panel connector. Take a closer look at your wires, and there should be markings on them indicating what they're for. Um, on a gigabyte motherboard, um, as this example is going by here, your F panel, front panel connectors, usually have the following color coordinated um, association. The 
power switch is usually uh, indicated with red. The speaker is orange. Um, hard disk drives um, or hard disk drive uh, LED blue. Reset switch is green. And if you have a cha uh, Chase's intrusion header, um, that would be gray. Uh, if you get the polarity wrong, don't worry. Just turn the connector the other way, restart, and test for functionality. Before you do any physical adjustments, however, make sure your computer is turned off and unplugged. Uh, and press the power button once or twice to discharge any residual electricity that may be remaining. Also make sure to ground yourself by wearing an anti-static wristband or by touching a large metal um, object. Well everybody, this brings us to the end of today's video. You can find many helpful links and resources in the description below. Uh, as always, leave any questions or suggestions in the comment uh, section down below. We love hearing from you. Um, we're always looking for ways to improve our process. And don't forget to subscribe, we're always adding more content. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on our Ecology Designs production.